Go stream in. Something, something, something. Rawhide. And there's like a whippy sound. Okay, hello and welcome to the stream. Twitch tells me I am live now. Um, which, you know, I, I'm pretty sure I was alive anyway. Oh, no, no, live on stream. Not, uh, not a, uh, not live on. I just, let's ignore that part. Okay, so today what I plan to stream is, and I know I've been offline for a couple of days, you're welcome. Um, I do have a new microphone, but it doesn't seem to be working really well. If somebody uh, that I know shows up, I will probably test the microphone. The test will probably fail and will waste your time. However, if someone does not show up, we will be wasting your time with not what this says here. So let's go ahead and go to this problem real quickly and take a look at it. Um, and it's going to warn me that I... Oh, it's not okay. All right, so someone asked for a long time ago. This is like from, uh, you know, March of 2016, so close to four years ago. Um, I did give some tips. Now, I said this. Um, so I, I said this, and now no one has actually commented on this, but someone actually sent me an email saying, I need that formula. The formula that, if we didn't look at it, says... A hand calculable approximation and willing to assume circular orbits, I, we can provide one. But the accuracy will be nowhere near plus minus 100 kilometers, which is what he wants. Uh, but he, he didn't put it here. I'm not going to obviously show the email because I think that's not really private, but I, not something worth showing. Um, okay. Um, okay. Okay, 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 okay. So the rest of this question is useless, and in fact, the original question is also useless. Now, I was going to do that. I thought that would be sort of interesting, but it also occurs to me, uh, real planet orbits are elliptical, and they're actually not even elliptical because there's, there's more going on. Um, and I have done some stuff with ellipses that I'm going to try to find uh, just as a reference, but I don't think I've ever done anything with ellipses online, uh, you know, while live, at least live streaming. I have done it online, but not, not like video online. Um, and so I'm sort of curious to see what I can develop with ellipses just sort of while online. And again, um, that usually means it's going to be slower and worse than if I thought about it and posted it. So uh, once again, the stream is a, is a poor version of something that is already very poor. Uh, but it is, you know, for me it's interesting and I like streaming, so I'll do it. Um, so we will be looking at ellipses to make elliptical orbits. Uh, let's go ahead and let me see if I can find my own sort of, um, let me see if I can find my own sort of answer about ellipses. I think I need to go to my network profile because it might have been under math. It might have been under astronomy. It might have been under math. It might not. I might have just imagined it completely. Um, and I'm pretty sure this is not what, uh, ellipse, Barry Carter. I don't know if this searches my stuff or searches everything. Um, no. no wow, wow. I'm pretty sure this third one is mine. Um, so, okay, this is not an answer. I'd like to say that. Um, yeah, this is not very useful. Aha! This is also not very useful, but it, it looks kind of shiny. And I think this is the one... Um, yeah, where I have this hideously ugly uh, ellipse diagram where I talk about how to integrate all this stuff, do all this stuff, and come up with an answer that's so hideous no one can actually ever use it, uh, which, is, which is the goal. Um, so I don't think I even got any points for this one, did I? Yep, I got zero points for this. Um, and then I linked to one of my other answers, which it, it turns out is wrong. And I think I actually say that. Um... Uh, dazzle people with my Mathematica diagram creating skills. So this is uh, this is the same thing. Hang on. Now I think this is a different answer, but um, yeah. And uh, again, this is just really really ugly. But I want to show you the ugliness. I want to show you how to get to the ugliness. Why am I repeating work I've done before just to stream it? Hey. Why does anyone do anything? So let's go ahead and go to GeoGebra, which I think will be the um, uh, will be the, uh, the the tool I'm going to use. I will sign in, I think. 
Oh, God damn it! please don't tell me you forgot my username again. Alright, stand by while I try to figure out what the hell my password is. And then I'll, I'll, I'll say it out loud so you can, you can know what it is. <laughs> no, I won't do that. Although it's not really that important. I mean, it's not going to kill me. Um, uh, okay, here it is. It is... Oops, I think I messed that up. Yes, I'd like to view my saved logins, please. Okay, that's not very helpful. Okay, followed by... I think I've had it save it before and it just never works. And here are my wonderful things I've done before that all suck. I'm pretty sure we cannot do ellipse stuff in any of this. This is too different from this. So we will go ahead and create one and we will call it... Um, that I'm confused. Acti what do I want to do? Activity? A book? What the hell am I creating? I'll make a book, maybe. Shiny. Um, maybe I shouldn't do that. Let's create an activity. Now I'm confused. No. I just want a new thingamajooby. A new resource, maybe? I'm confused now. Help me. Um. Oh, you know what? I think I can just actually, if I do 2D, it'll just take me to a new, um. There we go. I don't know how that works. It's very sad. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an ellipse, and now there's a, um. There's an open question as to whether, I mean, you can do it either way, but should we put the eclipse's center, meaning the center of the two foci here, or should we put one focus here? Now, of course, in with Kepler's rule, we do want to measure the area from a focus. Uh, on the other hand, it turns out, the, the last time I did it, uh, using a um, using a, a, an ellipse uh, that whose you know, foci are not at zero um, is actually, uh, is actually, uh, is actually more useful, it turns out, I think. We also probably need, okay, now this is, um, this is a case we're going to have uh, too much instead of too little. Uh, there's a lot of stuff I've done with ellipses that I don't necessarily want to do right now. Okay, that was weird. I think I had to do something, I, there's some sort of weirdness going on here. Uh, there we go. Every time I re, uh, remount the secure shell, it does some weird stuff. I wish I'd pipe that to less. Um, the Particle Man stuff is just, it probably won't even work. Was at one point a, um, uh, a particle system that drew an ellipse, or kind of, I don't really know what it did, but it did something that involved ellipses. Um, okay, so it looks like I've got a few of these things going on here. Um, and I want to do something new with this. So, well, let's actually go ahead and go ahead and look at. These are not going to be very interesting. BC ellipse star dot ping. So this is the ugly diagram I had before, and this is the ugly other diagram I had before. Um, so okay, so there's that. So I guess what we're going to do here today, we're going to go ahead and create a text file. Uh, okay. For notes on, we'll even put a date on it. That's so exciting. I can't spell the word notes, but we'll put a date on it. 2020! I almost forgot. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw an ellipse first. That would be sort of the, the primary thing to do. I think that is an ellipse, right? Ellipse. Uh, select two foci and then a point on the ellipse. So our two foci will be here and here. Then a point on the ellipse. Let's make this... Um, let's make, I want to make this fairly big here. Now, I'm kind of worried that my two foci aren't far enough apart, because, well, uh... Alright, I think... I think I'm going to cancel this. Alright, we, we, we want a fairly big... We want, we want a fairly oblate ellipsoid, another ellipse. In other words, we want something that looks much more like an ellipse than any real planetary orbit would, because we want to do, um... We want to do some, uh, you know, we want to make our calculations clear that we're using a, um, so let's see, how about this? Oh, this is perfect, 543. 
I think we have a Pythagorean going there, but uh, I'm not sure. We don't need to display point three. So this is it. This is our ellipse. This is the center of our ellipse. Um, and let's let's uh, start talking. Oh, these were probably bad names for points. So we will call this one um, rename. We'll call this one uh, F prime. That already bad when you have to start naming things with the word prime. So we really probably shouldn't do that. In fact, I think I will actually name this G instead of F prime. F is the focus, so that, that's why we sort of want to reserve that name for this. This length is going to be A. Sorry, this length is, sorry. This length here that goes from minus five to five is the major axis of the ellipse. This length that goes from four to negative four is the minor axes of the, uh, of the ellipse. However, the, more, the values we normally use are half of these called the semi-major and the semi-minor axes. And we will assign those, obviously they're five and four here, but generically we will call them A and B. And I'm going to regret doing this really soon, but um, let's see, I'm going to try drawing in this distance here. I may have to get rid of it because it's going to get ugly. So how do I draw a lengthy thing? Uh, Two-headed vector, I think. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm already suspicious that I don't necessarily want to do this. Um, alrighty, let's go from here to here, and it's going to be called the, the length. No, 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 no. Delete, delete, undo. Oh, that did work. I don't know why that worked. Okay. Rename. This will be A, which is actually its length, not its name, but that's, that's okay. Now the problem is this... God damn it. The problem is this point E... No, what the hell? I, re I reset. I want this, you pieces of crap. So get rid of this. Get rid of this. We do want to keep A. Now the problem here is, of course, it's not clear what A is referring to, but so we can go to settings. This still won't really help that much, but... Um, I don't think it should be advanced. Uh, color style should be two-headed. That's not helpful. Um, maybe I can change it under basic. Oh, seriously? This is not, I can't create a two-headed vector to represent distance? I know I've done this before. Maybe. That's not, that's not, that's not, okay. Wow. I apparently cannot change that. Oh, I can't apparently get out of this menu either. Well, I, c I can get out of the menu. Um, is there a way to draw a two-headed vector? That's vector from point. You know what, it might be if I draw a line, I can do that. I can actually just make the line with two points, which is kind of, and of course when I say line, I mean line segment. This is this is why people. Oh shit! 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 Undo! 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 I want that back. What the hell is C? And why do I not? I guess it's the. Um, <sighs> oh shit! I didn't mean to do. That. I actually literally hit the wrong thing there. Undo! I want my ellipse back. I just don't want to have it named. Um. Don't show label. Okay, so now I'm st further back than I was before. Let's go ahead and see if we can draw a line segment. And I think if you draw one of these, one of the options is uh, you can draw it with two arrows if you want. And I think that's a style option. Oh, I thought maybe. Apparently it's not a style option. So a color option is probably an advanced option. Yeah. All right. So even though I like GeoGebra, this is not turning out, it's not starting out well. Okay. Um, ah, 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 wrong one. Wait. All right, these are the foci. Wait. Didn't I rename my foci? 
seriously. Not looking too good. This is G. This is foci F. Oh, I think I restarted, which is why this didn't work the way I wanted. No, I just want to rename it. Um, it's foci F. Okay. We don't really need to show D. Um, um, make this length is A, but we don't really need to see A, a D, and C. But those are uh, we can make those points in... No, we probably want to see the points. We just don't want to see the labels. Actually, now I don't care. So this this one we think we're going to call O for the origin. That's, that's not a bad name for that. And this we're going to call... Let's call it C. Go ahead and leave it C. Okay, now we want a line that goes from, you know, B, the semi-minor axis. Um... Um, okay, one second here. I've got lots of pop-ups showing up that tell me. Uh, it is Pomodoro time, but it is the first uh, Pomodoro of the stream, so I will ignore it. Uh, starting after this one, we will, in fact, I will, in fact, get up and walk around. Okay, uh, so this is, oh, see, this is the, uh, this is length A. And now I've got to be really careful what I want to draw here. Segment, ray, polyline, I guess vector, although I'm not really, really happy with that. Starting point is O, ending point is here, and this vector is going to be called, and every single time I do that incorrectly. I don't even know how to get out of it, actually. You can't even hit escape, doesn't actually get, get you out of it. You have to kind of go over here, and I guess that does it. And then we call this length B. Um, let's go over here. Okay, B. I guess we should be happy with that for now. Um, yes. All right. <sighs> okay. Man. So we also need the length from... We're going to do a lot of stuff with this... Um, with this ellipse in a generic sense of the word, not in necessarily a... Uh, you know, with these specific numbers, uh, 3, 4, 5, which I'm pretty sure are a Pythagorean triple for a reason, but we're going to do it more in general. So one thing we do want is the distance from O to F, which I guess we just call OF. But let me make life more complicated and do a vector from O to F go back to this, being very careful. Now, we will make these vectors different colors and stuff, so we do sort of have this uh, O to F is going to be, um, you know, we'll make it, um, we'll make it this color. And we will give it the name. Wait, why? Oh, because we haven't used you again, so we'll call this like F. So I think it's sort of clear, Hannah, this from the zero to the focus is F, but zero all the way to C is A. Actually, it's not clear at all, is it? Um, oh man. So I'm tempted to put like little arrows here saying from O to C. Or, or, hey, come back here. Or I can change the label here. Uh, so I don't want to change the name, but I want to give it a caption that says A equals OC. I don't think I need to turn there. Okay, good deal. I'm kind of happy now. All right, so the first thing we want to do is we know an ellipse is the set of all points whose sum distance from the two foci are equal. What is that distance that we're looking for? We're going to use it. We're also going to use it to determine, uh, you know, what F is equal to. Lots of good stuff is going to be going on here. This point should definitely not be named A. This point should probably... I don't think we need, we need to name it, um, actually. Um, and we don't need to... I'm pretty sure we don't need to do this one either. So... Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so the first thing we want to figure out is what is this... Uh, so we know that... And by the way, we're going to try using the mathics again because I never learned. Um, it's probably going to fail and we're going to end up using Wolfram Cloud, but for right now... Okay. 
So what is this distance that we have from the two foci? What is, you know, what is the sum of the distance from the two foci? Okay. Um, so this is a point that's on the ellipse whose, um, whose coordinates are a comma zero. Uh, so we know that a comma zero is on the ellipse, and what is the sum of its distances uh, from the two, the sum of the distances from the two points? Well, okay. Uh, we know this distance is this, we know this distance is f, so this distance, the sum from this foci, is a minus f. Okay? And th this is not going to be very I exciting, but the distance from a to this focus over here, well, you have to go all the way over here, which is a, and then we know by symmetry this is f, so it's a plus f. So the total distance is a minus f plus a plus f, which, by the way, is 2a. So that's the distance of any point uh, from the, you know, the sum of the distances from any point um, to, um, to the two foci. Okay. So now using this, can we create a formula? So this doesn't really tell us very much. This is just a very standard thing known about. You know. So in this case, it's going to be 10, but in general, the sum of the distances is going to be 2a. So now can we tell, can we c come up with what f is equal to uh, in terms of, let's say, b? Because we know that another point on the, on the ellipse is 0, comma b. Its distance must be 2a. So what we know now is, well, the distance from uh, you know, this to this is basically f squared plus b squared. Well, square root of that, but yeah. So it's going to be square root of f squared plus b squared. I'll go ahead and write it in a way that MathX and Mathematica would understand it in case we ever need that. Plus, what's the other side? Well, it, this is an isosceles triangle because of symmetry. So this is also f squared plus b, sorry, f squared plus b squared equals this distance. So the sum of these two distances is basically the square root of, okay, plus square root of, uh -huh. well, it's basically twice this, okay? So we know that twice the square root of f squared plus b squared, the square root of b squared, this, this distance plus this distance is got to be equal to 2a because every th every distance is equal to 2a. So can we do that? Can we use that to solve for um, for f in terms of b? A and b are, are sort of our givens. Usually they're not. Usually what's given is the eccentricity and and the semi-major axis, which is a. But we'll get to that in a little bit. We're going to kind of just jump around here a little bit because I want to. All right. So what we're going to do is. Um, we want to solve this for f. We want to see what value of f will make this true. And it's not a very difficult value. Um, I certainly hope MathX can solve it. Good deal. Um, and there are two solutions. One of them is negative, which obviously is not correct. Um, whoa. I'm pretty sure they wanted like parentheses or something there. God, I hope. That is. Oh, wait, you can't just say square root of my. I mean, what? Okay, I'm having trouble with this, but let's. Let's, let's do this. F given that. Square root of A over square root. Meaningless because there's no function there. Alright, so we have to give up on Mathix almost immediately, which I'm not surprised about. I'm pretty sure they mean here um, square root of a over square root of minus which is b. So square, uh, yeah, I don't know. Let's just do it with the bullfrog. Sorry, I didn't really think that would um, we'd have to go this quickly to to Wolfram Cloud. Uh, I probably should have known better. Okay, let's always do a new, new notebook because I have no idea what the hell I'm doing. It looks like I am still logged in, fortunately. Get rid of Mr. Wolfie Man. So let's go ahead and do this again. And I'm going to do a uh, Escape W to copy it, and uh, Control V to paste it, and then Shift Enter to evaluate it. Um, oh, I know what's wrong. Okay, my bad, my bad, my bad. Uh, <laughs> it's interesting that <laughs> square root of square root. It's very strange. Sorry. Uh, this is uh, this is math. This is mathematics and mathematics. The format ha has to be like this. It has to be the square root of f squared plus b squared. You can't use parentheses for functions. That is my, my mistake. I, I already knew that. You couldn't do that. So we'll give Mathix another chance here. 
Um, this actually looks like the correct answer. Um, well, this is the negative. There's negative and positive. Obviously, we want our distances to be positive, so we're going to use the positive value. Um, so, wow, let's just ask the question again. Why don't we... And I don't know why this cut and paste doesn't always work. It's a little bit weird, but I don't know if it's... Okay, so, so F equals um, square root of... Now, you could write it as A plus B, A minus B. That is a perfectly valid way of doing it. I'm going to write it as A squared minus B squared. That's the same thing, because A squared minus B squared factors into this. I like this form a little bit better. Okay, so we're in good shape. We know how big F is. We know a lot of stuff now. Um, so now what we're going to try to do is parameterize a point on the ellipse. In other words, you know, if you have a point on the ellipse, what can you tell me about it? Um, lots of things, it turns out. Uh, so now we're, we, we're going to sort of... Um, this is where it gets a little bit tricky because there's lots of ways to parameterize, at least four ways I know of how to parameterize an eclipse, an eclipse, an ellipse, uh, and they all suck. And, well, actually, that's not true. Uh, some of them suck, some of them don't suck as much. Um, and I'm trying to see which one is the easiest way to do it is basically to say this point has to be uh, A times cosine of something, B times sine of the same thing. Uh, you can prove that formula is correct uh, by looking you know, at the distances and saying that that has to be that. Unfortunately, the, the, the T that's being represented there, um, the, the parameter that's being represented there does not represent anything useful at all. It doesn't represent this angle that we would make to the point. It doesn't represent this angle from the focus, which we could use to find, you know, if we know the area of the angle to the focus, that increases uniformly. It's pretty lame, actually. It's a pretty lame way of parameterizing an ellipse. It is easy, though. So let's go ahead and draw a point. Oh, hang on. No, no, point on object. Okay, and this one's definitely going to be called P. This is sort of our canonical point on the uh, point on the ellipse so lots of ways of doing this um, and one way I'm going to do the way I'm going to do this I'm going to regret doing this um, is we're going to look at the angle FOP which we're going to call theta that is not the angle that is the uh, that is um, if that that might be the mean anomaly, but I'm not even sure it's that. We're not going to call it anything. We're just going to we're just going to use it. So let's see if we can draw an angle. Probably. Um, angle select three point. Okay. So we have U, U, and U. Yeah, that would look a lot better if I'd probably drawn the rest of this. But let's take a look at this angle real quick. Um, COP, yeah, 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 yeah. So actually, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this and draw the angle. I'm going to go ahead and draw the line from OP and then use that as the determination of this uh, angle. Uh, and again, the value doesn't matter because we're actually just using. Um, so this time we can do a vector from O to P. And I don't. I mean, it's this. Probably does not need a name right now. If it does, we'll, we'll show it later. Okay, so this is just an arbitrary point P, and now we're going to give the angle theta. Uh, so it's like three points of this line and this line. This line. Hey, what the hell? Where's my angle? I want my angle. It's like three points or two lines. Line one. Line two. That did not do anything. Line one. Line two. Nope. Okay, point one. Point two. And point... There we go. Point three. Ta-da! We obviously don't want to call it... Uh, you know, in fact, we probably don't even want to call it alpha because... Um, we're, I'm trying to avoid Greek letters because they're not, they're not trivial to use, unfortunately. Uh, so let's go ahead and give this a um, let's go ahead and give this the name T, which will stand for theta, um, and just show the name. Don't show the name and the value. Okay. 
And I think I want to style this, if I can, to make this a little bit... Can I do that? I definitely can move O to, so it's over here. That, that looks okay. So that's angle T. So now we want to know what is P in terms of angle T. Um, or actually, what is angle T if we know uh, P is X... Com well, let's see. What the hell do we want to know? If we know angle T, we want to know what P is. Okay. Um... Can I, can I move P around? I can move P around. That's kind of nice. These are the days of our angles. Okay, so c the thing is, we've got to be careful here. There's a, there's a difference when P is to the right of F and when P is to the left of F. Those are, th th they turn out to be the same answer, but they, they are uh, separate cases. Okay, so now we want to find out what uh, point P is, given all the information we already have. Um... So what do we know here? We know that P... We don't know the length of P, actually, because we're... This is not in a circle. Uh, let's see. If P is X, Y, then we know that... Um, and let's go ahead and call... Let's go ahead and say P is equal to X, Y. That's, uh, that's the... Uh, that's just... A, those are n unknowns right now. But that's what we want. P equals X, comma, Y. And we're good. Okay, so that's the point. That's an arbitrary point. So, um, what are x and y? Well, uh, we can figure that out by computing the distance to the two foci. Now, hang on. Actually, wait, 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 wait. Crap. Okay. Because we know this is a point, uh, th this angle is theta, we know that y... Okay. Opposite over adjacent, y over x, is tan t. So let's go ahead and write that down. Um, and this, yeah, let's... I guess I'll try to be a little bit more... So we know that y over x is tan t. There's other ways to say it, of course. We could say that, you know... Um, no, that's probably the best way to say it. Opposite y over adjacent x is tan t. And what that lets us do is... Basic, what we really want is that lets us say that uh, y is equal to x times tan t. That's how we're going to use this. Equal to tan t. So now the question is... Uh, what can we say about uh, what can we say about x if we know what what t is? If we know what the central angle is? Excuse me. I don't know if that's an excuse me. I'm sucking down some coke. Whatever the hell that whatever the hell the word is for that. Um, okay. So again, we're going to use the standard equation of the of the ellipse, which says uh, the distance from this point to this, plus the distance of this point to this, is 2a. We, we already know that. Um, another way we could use this is to say the distance squared is 4a squared. It turns out it's a little bit easier to solve, but we're going to do it this way, and if, if, if it's difficult, we'll go ahead and just use the square equivalents. Okay, so we have um, uh, the, the, the so it's going to be x minus uh, the distance, uh, the x point minus f, so that's just f. Um, x, x squared plus y squared. And the y is just going to be x tan t minus 0. So that's distance to point 1. Um, the distance to the first focus. The distance to the second focus is given by, we just keep going plus here. Um, this is going to be x, um, this is minus f, so it's going to be basically x uh, minus minus f, which is of course x plus f squared, plus the y distance is going to be the same. So it's basically this triangle here, and this triangle here, both of which are right triangles. Um, and again, the y remains the same for both. The f distance is, uh, here it's just x minus f, here it's x, this distance plus f. So it's x, um, actually hang on. It's x. Okay, so this is x. The distance here is x plus f. Yeah, that is correct. And once again, plus x times tan t squared. Um, so this is the distance squared. I think we're just going to use... Let's see. I'm going to make sure I got this right. x squared plus y squared of 1... Um, no, actually, this is... I do have to be careful. Because we're adding distances, we can't add the squares of the distances. So this is... 
distance from one, plus distance to the second, so this is different, equals is 2a. So we want to solve this with respect to the thing we don't know, which is x. Given all this information, uh, God willing, this is... Wow, I'm impressed. Um, once again, there's a positive and a negative solution. We're going to go with the... Um, Okay, so now, this is where it's going to get ugly. I want to simplify. I, I think this simplifies. Uh, so we have x given this, and we have, ta-da. Now, I want to say, can we simplify this? And I think we can. Um, and the problem is, I don't believe this is the simplest possible form here. Um... Now, of course, if we do want to simplify it using um, Wolfram Cloud, we have to give additional conditions that these numbers are all real and so forth. Okay, it's Pomodoro time. I will be back in two minutes and two seconds. And I am back. So, looks like we're going to have to give up on... Let's see if I, I can simplify this myself here. Maybe. And we could pull this cosine t squared out, I'm almost sure, as a cosine t. This... I don't, well, see, this is, should be... Uh, maybe actually you can't simplify that any. Um... So let's see, so we have this angle T. Alright, that's not really a function I want to use. And of course the Y coordinate, this is a solution for X, the Y coordinate uh, will be this times tan of T, which may or may not simplify also. So I guess we are going to go ahead and fade to Wolfram Cloud, as we sort of saw ourselves doing. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. And let's go ahead and do it this way. If you're going to do it, do it right, as George Michael once said. So the f of given a and b is square root of a squared plus b squared. We've already determined that. Um, and we need to solve this equation. Um... We might as well set up our conditions, which are, um, okay, what are we doing here? Um, A is greater than zero, B is greater than zero, uh, F is greater than zero, because they all represent distances. So we know this, and T, uh, I mean, T is going between zero and two pi, so T is greater than zero, but I I think maybe I want to say t is greater than minus pi and t is less than pi. There, there, there's more than one way to say, you know, t is an angle, effectively. Okay. Um, unfortunately, I don't think mathx will, I mean, when it simplifies, it just pretty much decides 
this is the simplest form. It's not going to simplify any further, uh, unfortunately. So I'm not surprised we ended up going to Wolfram. And let's see if we can do something better than that. Um, so let's see. Now at some point, we're going to want to do like you know things that we already know are formulas. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. Um, so that's that's not very exciting yet. Um, and then let's see if we can simplify this. So we'll just call this. Um, uh, this is this is this is what I love about functional programming. You can just keep doing this forever. So simplify this given the conditions. Wow. I'm impressed actually. So actually, <laughs> um, I mean this is just two times that. So equals two times a. Wow. 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 And in theory, because I said, um, I didn't say it needs to be bigger than zero, did I? Um, and it actually doesn't. And these are both valid answers. Uh, so this is really ugly. Mm, let me squeeze squared. Wow. I am in awe of this not simplifying uh, further than this. Uh, and y is just going to be this times tan t or whatever, but that's still really, really nasty. Um, so maybe this is why I never bothered to use this uh, this parameterization uh, because it's freaking ugly. Um, uh, so let's go ahead and go back here and you will no longer be you will be called a yeah we need a name for you. You will be called angle stupid. Uh, you will be called angle. C? Have I used C? I don't think I've used C. Okay. And you will be, uh, we're going to use the other parameterization that we had, which is, um, which is P is equal to XY is equal to, well, let's not do that. Let's see. Um, A times cosine of T, B times sine of T for some value of T that is currently unspecified. All right. That looks really horrible, but I think we're going to live with it. All right, let's see. Da, 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 da. Am I happy with that? No, I'm not really that happy with that. Um, okay, so this is the a more standard parameterization of the ellipse given A and B. How do we know it is a parameterization? Well, <laughs> uh, and unfortunately, the T here is not the C here, nor is it this angle that we're going to be interested in very quick, very soon, the focal angle, uh, it's not equal to that either. It's not equal to anything, actually. That's, that's sort of the problem with it. Let's go ahead and draw in um, our third vector here. This is, the, uh, this, is, this is the area from the focus. This is the thing we're actually going to be interested in at some point. Um, and we don't need to rename it. We just don't want to show that uh, label. Okay. Um, I don't think there's a fill function here, unfortunately, because this is the area from the focus here. This is the, this is the sort of cool area that we've been doing. Um, and this angle is actually not super important. We can find it, but it's not super important. Um, now, there's got to be a fill function here, right? I mean, graphics? Ooh, shiny. Um, but I think this is actually, we're just looking at one of the objects. So let's see if there's a fill function here. I think last time we discovered there was not a fill function. One of the few things that it's missing is you cannot fill in an area bounded by, um, bounded by points. Ooh, but you could. Oh, you could do this, though. Uh, so that is, I mean, that's not exactly the same thing, but it's for, it works for us. Okay. Polygon. First, this vertex, this vertex, this vertex. Oh, no, that's not what we want. Never mind. Control Z. Out. We don't want it. Uh, unfortunately, we need this curved area as well. So we would need 
fusion. I mean, we could probably still do it, but let's see what we have here. Is that point capture style? Good stuff here. Um. Yeah, there's probably no flood fill here. We can we can name this area something, uh, and we can name this area something. It would be nice to have sort of a flood a flood fill. Um, and it does not appear that any of these will do that. Nor does it appear that any of these will do that, or these, or these. Um, well, now wait a minute. I just select, I can't select the center of this, unfortunately. Oh, well, can you, can you draw for me? Alright, hang on, this might, this might be able to do something. I mean, I, it's great that you know the area, I just want to kind of, um, um, turn it orange. Uh, yeah, so it's not going to actually give me the, it's not going to let me actually, uh, oh, this is actually just a text object, so we can delete that. I want an actual area, you piece of crap. Um, this is, yeah, this is going to be very, oh, we do have a length. That's what I wanted, okay. Alright, so we do have an area, but I'm pretty sure that, uh, select polygon, circle, or conic. So I think we can only select one of these things, yeah. So unfortunately, this is not what we want. Um, so this area is going to be important to us because this is the the area from which um, the area from which we measure the the actual anomaly of a planet because per Kepler uh, it's this planet will sweep out equal areas in equal times. Um, so I guess we're going to go ahead and do this old treatment here which I'm not super happy with. Um, but let's go ahead and make let's go ahead and see that for any value of t this is actually a valid point on the ellipse. So we're going to be looking at, um, so distance from 1, we're just going to call it d1 for right now, um, a times cosine of t minus uh, the x value of the first focus squared um, plus uh, b times sine t minus the, uh, the y value of the focus, which is 0 because we chose it to be that. And it's the square root of this. Um, D2 equals, it's almost the same thing. And it's going to be uh, A cosine T plus F, because again, we are going on the other side. We are, we're, you know, we're, it's, it's, to the it's to the origin and then to the other axis. Uh, and it's this. Yep. And so what we want to show is... Um, we want to show that some of these distances is always going to be 2a. And I'm trying to see if there's, it's obvious from what we're doing right now. Um, and I... There's a real temptation here, because cosine squared uh, plus sine squared is 1. We're not quite there, but we're very close to that. Uh, simplify these with respect to the conditions that we already have. Let's see what this does. If this doesn't work, I will be unhappy. Um, it is not true in general, by the way. It is only true because these conditions hold. And yeah, I'll go ahead and print out everything in the in the way. Uh, mm -hmm. And of course, our t is no longer, but I mean, still, that, that's actually a fine condition. It's not what we really want, though. Um, Yeah, this is not. This is not what I expected. Um, eight, ten, okay. Well, fullness. How do we know this is necessarily equal to? Uh, uh, to it. We're going to go ahead and, and square it, and um, that's not going to necessarily help, by the way, but it might help. Yeah, that didn't help at all, did it? 
I'm hoping to get 4a squared. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and let's push Mathematica to its very limit. Yeah, it's not looking too good. Um, oh, I guess we probably need to say that f is equal to... Um, we know what f is because we know what a and b are. So I think that's the problem. So we need to say that um, uh, f of a and b squared of a squared plus... Uh, minus b squared. So this is actually b squared minus b squared. So we'll just say this is given that f goes to square root of a squared minus b squared. Okay, and this is also given that f goes to square root of a squared minus b squared. And God willing, this will break. You've got to be fucking kidding me. A cosine t minus square Wow. Well, let's see if the square of it simplifies, although I'm, I'm not guessing it won't. Yeah. I might be missing something here that I need to, um, that I need to fix. Um... But just wow. I mean, I I, I was I was I was fairly convinced this was a this was a really good way to parameterize an ellipse, uh, and it was provable that you could parameterize it this way. Uh, but apparently, uh, and I guess we could put it in here b is less than a. But I mean, that's not that's not really that important. Um, uh, what else do we know? So this is this is. Um, this is the distance given a and b and t, where t is just like a number. Um, uh, just wow. Well, I'm. I guess I'm. I'm. I'm sort of disheartened that this is not how you. Pra I'm, I might have gotten the parameterization wrong. Uh, let's go ahead and double check, but. Um, Uh, I'm pretty sure this is actually, there's many ways to do it, uh, but, uh, yeah, it's basically a cosine t times b sine t. Um, it's the parameter, but it's not the angle. Um, do they prove this is a, um, um, Yeah, I mean, this is the circular parameterization. Uh, but do they actually show that the, the, the distance from this to the foci are some to, uh, some to the 2a? I mean, some to the, same, some to the same thing, which should be 2a at every time. Um, that is... That is... I'm, I'm impressed, actually, somewhat. Um... um a squared plus a squared of that, squared of that. And one thing we could do, and this is very ugly, we could test out a few values just to see if you know. So if t goes to zero, that's the simplest possible value. I'm sure it'll simplify. Really? Oh, I guess I need to put the full simplify here, and that better damn well simplify to 2a. Of course. Um, so d1 plus d squared... Oh, shit. Okay, hang on. Given that t goes to zero, and then under cons, although I don't think we need cons in this case. Ta-da! And we might as well just say this. Okay, so now, if that works for t, does it go work for t to go to one? No, it does not. How about t goes to pi over 4? God damn it, pi over 2? Yep. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. So we know that it's for, um... This is fucking retarded. No offense to people who are IGR. Because that doesn't simplify. 
All right. Let's say the uh, the distance with respect to t is equal to d1 plus d2. So that gives it. We, we're basically creating a little function here. And well, let's go ahead and make, just do that. So this is the function. We want to show that it's constant. So what I want to do is take its derivative with respect to t in 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 real numbers, but that's sort of implicit. And that's that. And let's see if we can full, I don't know why we would be able to full simplify this and not the original. And of course, it's always possible that I'm uh, I'm wrong, and this doesn't this isn't the right parameterization. But um, yeah, it's good to think about that. Uh, unless that is the full simplification. No, because we're still on we're still on. Wow. That is freaking wild. Pomodoro back in two and two. Okay, I'm back. And let me check a couple of things here before we continue. Uh, okay, I've been going for about an hour, and I think I'm going to probably quit out of this session in about 20 minutes or so. So when the next Pomodoro rolls around, we might just call it. Now, I'm pretty sure this parameterization is from the center of the two foci of the ellipse, and it certainly looks like that. Um, And the important thing to note here is it is not the angle subtended at the point. Um, it is, in fact, nowhere near that. Uh, it's, just, it's just a weird kind of a thing that happens to parameterize uh, the, uh, the ellipse. Um, so I guess, I guess what's going to bug me about this is... Um, I guess, well, the general equation of the ellipse just says that, yeah, x squared plus b. That, that's that's a well-known fact. That's not that's not helpful here. Okay, so now we can wind. You know, we, this might make a valid question for Mathematica, actually. Um, um, I, I mean, the only thing I can see that I might have been doing wrong is that f might not be uh, a squared mi squared of a squared minus b squared, but actually. Uh, I think you can actually show that from the diagram directly. Um, oh, can we? Actually, maybe not. Um, I mean, f squared plus b squared is not equal to a squared, so that's not, that's not that. Um, 
Hmm, actually, that's a good question. Can we show that directly? Um, we know that the distance from B to the sum of the two uh, things is is equal to 2a. Um, and we also know it's equal to uh, b squared of b squared plus <coughs> f squared. Let me actually look at that equation again. I might have messed that up, but I'm pretty sure I didn't. Um, yeah, squared of f squared plus b squared, and that one definitely is f squared plus b squared. Uh, that's the distance from this to this, and then it's the same distance here, it's isosceles. Um, I guess if we wanted to, we could actually get this angle, which is going to be not interesting, but, but interesting nonetheless. Um, so we're sort of dissecting an ellipse and looking at the different values of it. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure that's actually a well-known formula too. Square root of a squared minus b squared is the focal distance. There is a way to find out though. Let's see if we, there is a, a search engine um, for mathematical equations uh, or formulas, I guess. Um, unfortunately, it's not that great of an equation, but let's let's see if we can use it. That's not what I was looking for at all. Uh, I don't think I have it bookmarked here, so search on math. This is not maybe the same one as Symbol Lab. Okay. We need your support to keep running. Go fuck yourself. Okay. So I'm going to say square root of a squared mi minus b squared. And let's just see if we come up with anything. Yeah, that's not very useful. Um, although I don't know if it accepts the symbol square root. It might be looking for something different. However, I'm not going to give it something different. Um, this is the, uh, what's the best way to search? Th this is, someone actually answered this question. Um, there's more than one. Um, yeah. People have tried creating their own. I have too. Uh, but it didn't work. I mean, it's going to be very incomplete. Dictionary for quest. Um, there, there is a, there is a solution here. I'm pretty sure. I'll say search engine for formulas because that's maybe a little bit more clear than equations. Though I suppose you could argue, well, the same results. Um, well, let's see if Google itself is smart enough to do this. I don't think it will be, but Google is getting better every day. Let's face it. Hmm. Well, the word ellipse is in there. Ooh, this looks promising. Uh, some two distances when the major is minus c. And okay, so they're, they're following the same treatment I do. I'm going to go ahead and bookmark this. Um, B, uh, D1, since we have D1 is equal to... Interesting. Constant is two a. We, we got there. Uh, the equation of the ellipse, which we actually know what that is. Um, this is this is oh Jesus Christ! Come on, man. That's not really helpful because that gives us y in terms of x, but it doesn't give us anything useful in terms of parameters. Um, I mean, I guess we could just, you know, say y is equal to this, therefore x has to equal this, but that's not very helpful. Um, so we are, uh, we are still kind of stuck here. Um, we need to prove that this is actually uh, any point that satisfies this for a real value of t is on the ellipse. Its distance from this point plus its distance from this point uh, is is constant, and it, the constant is 2a, but that's really not the hard part. Um, yeah, not great. Not great. So, now one thing we could try doing is turning this into a question for uh, for mathematica.stackexchange.com. Not really sure I want to do that, though. Um... And we do have the corrections going on here, so okay, we could do this. Let's let's be a little bit nicer here. 
Well, let's go ahead and simplify before we uh, go nuts with the uh, with the main simplification. So we're going to simplify this. I don't know if it simplifies, but um, it might not simplify at all. But this will, at the very least, help Mathematica do the best possible job it can. All right. So, yep, those don't simplify. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and there's the simplification pulls out sine t. Uh, that doesn't help us any. Because uh, sine t is not constant. But, uh, okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm drawing sort of a blank here. Um, not sure how to... We could go back to our other parameterization that we've proven is correct. Uh, but it's very ugly, so m maybe I don't care that it's ugly, though. Um, um, wow. Just, just wow. And this value should be zero at all times, so I mean, it's insane, though. Um, why don't you pull an A out of here? You could pull an A out of this. Um... Oh, no, you can't, because there's this other term here. Um, wow. I, I'm beginning to actually doubt the formula now because of this. Um, one way to test formulas like this... Oy vey. One way to test formulas like this... Um... Uh, so d of t, given that a goes to a random number and b goes to a random number, uh, this is not the greatest way to do it because um, because we we don't know which the random numbers there are, but w this should give us not what we want. I'm stumped. Okay, let's go ahead and go back to our other uh, parameterization, which is actually better because it actually has an it has something involved in it that we can uh, we want this angle C ultimately because we're going to be looking for the area of this triangle FOP. That's going to be the uh, the height, which I guess is just not be not going to be this anymore. Um, the you know the the base half the base times the height. Uh, so that's that's going to be whatever that is. Um, Okay, a little bit disappointed. A little bit disappointed here. Uh, okay. I'm still still trying to do it. I'm still trying to figure out a way to do this that proves that this point is necessarily um, necessarily on, on the ellipse. Um, and I'm not really getting anywhere with that. Um, I mean this distance plus this distance, uh, I mean, that there's just... I mean, it's clearly true at 90, and it's clearly true at 0 and 90, but that's, those are special cases. Okay, let's go ahead and proceed as though we care. Um, so, we're going to go ahead and bring up our little uh, equations here, which we, we don't actually use, but we're going to go ahead and do it just because, for our format's sake. Now, actually, I do have a... Um, in BC Lib M, I actually do have a whole bunch of ellipse formulas. A, B, 2, yeah. Uh, check the <laughs> well, they might be wrong. Okay. If A and B are the seven major and minor axis, the easy eccentricity, and MA is the mean and longitude of true anomaly. Ellipse area from focus is this. We could show that's true. Uh, mean, anomaly, mean anomaly to T, where T is just a parameter, the parameter we're talking about. Mean anomaly to true anomaly to XY, blah, 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 blah. And I was hoping to derive some of these functions, but we've got hit pretty bad news right here, right now, um, in saying that the x and y terms uh, are not necessarily representable by, uh, by this equation. Um, oh, so that, that's, that's kind of sad. Um, well, let's see. We know that this squared over a squared plus this squared, oh, okay, that might be the way to do it. Okay, that might be the way to do it. Okay, so for points on the ellipse, we're hoping to show... Oh, brother. 
standard form of an ellipse is x squared over a squared plus uh, y squared over b squared equals something. I think zero, but that could be no, that can't be right because those numbers are all positive. Um, x squared is equal to not r squared, which would would be for a um, uh, w w which it would be for a circle, but it's constant. I think is what we're going to say. Um, and I think this is the development they did right here. They went from here to getting the more standard development of an eclipse, which is equals one. I'm sorry, that's what that's what I meant to say. Equals one. But the question is, can we derive this? Can we? In, if this is true, we might be able to make it easier to get to the formula that lets us parameterize using sine and cosine. Um, so is this necessarily true, though? Um, so this would be saying that basically. Alrighty. Oh, this is going to be a freaking nightmare. All right, we're going to go ahead and solve this for y. We want or y. Uh, we have to solve it for y. And then we're going to see if y is equal to that for any x, whether or not the um, the uh, distances from the two foci are equal. So this is this is uh, pretty much of a freaking nightmare here. Um. It's actually not too bad. Um, and let's go ahead and put this here. So this is a. Uh, um, so now we want to know what the distance is from the two foci uh, of of x comma y, which is of course. Um, yeah, we might want to start putting in. Um, we might want to start putting in some actual formulas here to make our lives easier. I mean, the whole point of using a symbolic manipulator is not to have to use uh, the full formulas each time. Okay. So f of a and b, we have determined, is square root of a squared minus b squared. That is the distance f that we're talking about. Uh, the focal distance is... Um, of x, y from these, you know, the sum of the focal distances um, is uh, square root of x minus, I've got to be careful here, x minus f squared plus, that's x squared, that's the one distance plus the y squared is just going to be the um, y squared plus square root of x plus f squared plus y squared. That's the total. That's the distance. You know, I guess I'll call it foci distance because there's two of them. So this is the sum of the focal distances. Um, boy, that's ugly. Um, and we're hoping to show that if we satisfy this parameterization condition. Uh, we are also satisfying the condition that the sum of the focal distances is constant. Um, and I get, wait, let me go and try this real quick. Let's go ahead and see what this, this gives us. Um, And that was my fault because, of course, when we say f here, we do mean f of a and b. We, we do because a f is derived from a and b. So we want to do this, this. Unfortunately, I'm pretty sure this is going to break mathics because it doesn't like me redefining. It doesn't like me redefining stuff. And then I want to simplify that. Uh, this is this is we're going to nightmare city here. Fuck it. So we'll do this in, in Wolfram Cloud. Uh, but let's do a little bit more here before we do this. So this is the foci distance, the sum of the foci distance. Um, we can do things like, if you're given x, actually that might be valuable here. Um, solve foci dist of xy is equal to 2a, which we've determined is, the, uh, is what it has to be, uh, for y, given x. It's implicit that we're given x there. 
All right, so let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and get rid of oh the conditions we always need to keep. Let's go ahead and you know, cut and paste because I always forget the conditions. I always forget the conditions, man. Oh, good. We can't. We can't. Some days not worth chewing through the through the um. Not worth chewing through the. Uh, this is not part of the form. This is something we hope to make a formula. Um, not worth chewing through the ropes, as Emo Phillips used to say. Maybe he still says that. I don't know. Unless he's dead. Okay. Get rid of all this. Actually, can I think we're just going to get rid of everything. Yeah. And we're going to give it this information here. Return because this is still going to give us. I didn't haven't put semicolons, so we should get a little bit of a cool output here. And by cool, I mean very ugly. That's not what I expected. Ah, uh, Pomodoro, back in two and two. And we are back. Okay. Um. I guess we put semicolons here. I'm a little bit confused as to why it didn't give us um, all of the output we expected. Um. Let's go ahead and hit return and see what this does. Okay. It's a little bit strange. But usually it doesn't quite do that. Oh, I know what's wrong. Um, we need to merge these three cells. I don't think I can do... Uh, we need to merge... Okay, hang on. We need to merge this cell and this cell for sure. And then we need to merge that cell with this cell. I think that's what I'm trying to do. There we go. So this is one cell here. And I should get like, okay. That's more like what I expected. Okay, so the foci distance is, is this. Um, and then we'll go ahead and try to figure out the, uh, see if we can solve this uh, issue. And I guess I'm gonna be a little bit nice here and say, I know this won't simplify. Uh, this might simplify. Uh, given cons. And are our cons reasonable? Actually, we don't need f greater than zero because f is a derived function. We are not using t yet. Um, so these are the conditions that we have. And I think b less than a is not uh, not a necessary condition there, but we'll, we'll go ahead and get it. All right, okay. So that's it. There's no simplification there. Um, so let's go, ahead and solve, um, let's go ahead and solve our little equation and see if we get anywhere. Let's solve the um, foci distance is equal to 2a, given, um, so this gives us, oh, that's actually really nice. I like that. Um, and obviously there's two solutions, one top half, one bottom half, but this is actually a really good, um, 
This is really nice. So how the hell didn't we get this before? Um, and from here we could actually prove the, the, the parametric solution. Um, but this solution is really, really nice. I like it a lot. Uh, in fact, it might just be worth keeping around as a uh, formula. Um, okay. B over A times A squared minus the square root of X squared. Yeah. But the... Um, all right. Um, this is y of x. I mean, I don't know. Obviously, this is we're trying to go the other way direction with this. Actually, we want to put this back into our um, into our uh, formulas. So, given y, we know x. And again, this is I shouldn't be this surprised. This is the well-known formula for an ellipse, like we looked at earlier. Uh, it is just interesting that it got there very quickly from uh, from setting the foci distance equal to two a. Um, so now I'm going to be, this is just pointless. I'm just curious why the x squared should look really, it doesn't look as nice as I thought it would. Um, uh, this, this should look really nice. I mean, this should be very, um, what the hell? Oh, I know what's wrong. We, we're not actually going to simplify uh, so this is actually not what I wanted. I don't, y of x should not be this. So this is, sorry. Um, so this is incorrect. This sets y of x to this two element array, which I don't want. I want the uh, first element and I want it if y is set to the first element. I'm pretty sure that's what I meant to do. And now if I say y of x squared, I should get a nice cool thing. B squared over, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, um, under cons. I don't think that just, oh, nice. Um, so the square root of that is just going to be B, well, okay, I at some point we're, it's not going to matter. Um, okay, so that actually is probably not, this is a better form here. Um, that's not what I wanted to do. Um, um, yeah, I, this is not a great simplification, actually. So y of x in input form, that'd be what I want. Yeah. We obviously want it in a form that it's where it's easy to compute. We don't want it to have to solve it every time. Okay, so that's what we got here. Um, okay, so y of x is equal to that. That's a really nice. That's a really nice parameterization. I like it. I think I've said that like twenty times now. Um, okay, so using that, can we actually um, using the value of x? Can we actually determine uh, what we're looking for? Is essentially the area of a uh, of a of a triangle, um, or actually of, a, of an arc kind of thing. Um, let's go back over here. Um, well, we're not going to rename it. We're going to give it a different, uh, so P is equal to X, whatever its X value is, comma, let me see if there's a nice way of saying that. Um, I do not. I would just simplify it for me. Don't don't simplify simplify it. Yeah. Now I'm pretty sure I'm not. This isn't going to work. But if it does, I'll be impressed. Um, and I'm pretty sure that's not going to do what I want. Yep. Didn't think that was going to work. And you know, I'm, I'm just going to say x comma y, and we'll, it, you know, we'll we'll just use that. Um, we'll just use the formula for y when, as we need it. Okay, so if we know this, then we can also figure out a bunch of other stuff. Um, we're, I, we're working up to getting the area of this triangle and the area of this arc is what we're trying to do. Um, now, 
be careful because we can do it this way too. Uh, we need to get a formula that's generic enough. Um, so the area of this arc we do need integrate. We need to go basically from x to a. We need to integrate, and the value we need to integrate here is um, y of x, which we which we know what it is, but. Um, the only problem is, do, do we do, what happens if we have it over here? Do we need the same integral to get this area? Uh, here we need to go from p to f. So x to, uh, that's, the, well, hang on. Um, oh, wow, that area actually gets much uglier if you do this. I think it's the same area. The, the, the results turn out to be the same. Um, same formula, but it's just harder to harder to show that it's that. Um, oh right, right. What I've what I've done previously, which is much easier, is to get the area of this, uh, the OP thing. I wish I named R here, and then subtract off this triangle, which is actually a fairly well known triangle, because um, we know the height of this triangle is y, which we know in terms of x. Um, and and then we know the uh, the um, the base of this triangle, which is uh, sorry, the base is x, and the the uh, the height is y. That's how we defined it. Um, uh, sorry, sorry. This triangle here, this is the base, and the the length, you know, the, the height. The, sorry, this is the height, and the uh, base is just f because we we've, we've designed it that way. Um. At some point, I w ooh, is that flood fill? No. Is this flood fill? No. Um, is there a flood fill in the house? I don't think there is, actually, unfortunately. Um, let's go ahead and see if we can find flood fill in GeoGebra. Well, someone's asked about it. And maybe someone's found a really clever way of doing it. Um, nice, that redirection was not helpful. Um, brilliant, 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 brilliant. Um, filling arbitrary Mm, okay, that might be useful. We want a flood field function. <sighs> oh. Okay. Okay. Not okay. A workaround, I don't even, I'm, I already dislike it. Um, so screw that. We want an answer. Uh, in fact, let me go ahead and ask the word, I mean, we might as well say flood fill here if we're going to be looking for that. Ah, uh, flood, ooh. Dun, dun, dun. Unfortunately, okay. All right, actually, this might have been helpful. Let's nope, not that. Uh, how to fill a circular ring with color. Um, aha. 
There is another link that might be helpful. Nice. Wait. Yes. Help me do this. Okay, this is great. I wish I knew what the code was for this. Okay, hang on. Um. I could make this full screen. I don't think that's going to help me though. Um, show me. Oh, nope, not what I want. Show me magic. Open in app. There we go. Okay, good. So now we want... I want you to show me the... Um, nope, 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 nope. I want you to show me the little left-hand bar that you're always insisting on showing me when I don't want it. Yep, I want... Can I... Can I, I can't drag that out. Come on! Show me... Show me, show me. Oh, actually, let me select this and see what this is. Locus. Locus is awesome. Um, it'd be more awesome if I could get this freaking... You tell me what the hell I'm doing, but you know, whatever. Alright, so Locus seems like the magic word here. Um... Is it on any of these menus? Which it might not be. Dilate, refract on point, slider, text, image, button, box, input, move graphics, view, copy, visual style, delete. Um, new, open, save, edit, perspectives. What the hell is that? Okay, I don't think I need that. Um... Okay. So the word here is locus, I, but I mean, I'm just so tempted to say locus. Ooh. I want the locus of. We could try it with just P, F, O, and P. Is it not going to accept a third argument? Uh, point creating locus line point. Yeah. So th so there's a way to do it, but apparently it's not a um, not a trivial thing to do. Um, hmm. So now in theory we could say. For example, x less than a. Uh, no, we cannot do that because we have uh, x less than 5. <coughs> nice. Okay, so we do have the concept of a locus. Uh, unfortunately, we have to sort of do it the right way. Okay, so let's see. We'll be a little bit careful here because we are using actual values. Um, x less than p dot x no uh, px no that's not probably what I mean either I mean x of p <gasps> gasp okay okay this is useful um, wow I'm learning stuff and y less than y of p Ha-ha! Uh, no, aha. I guess I'm going to do this. I could just choose this area and then do settings. And then I could, oh, comma y less than yp. Now I wonder if I, uh, damn it. Wait. Explicit function, why? Why, 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 why? Okay. Can I put an and in there? And 
and y is less than y of p? <sighs> All right. So I'm guessing I create another locus, which is just basically y is less than y and p, intercept the two loci. Yeah, that's going to be fun. Oh, shit, 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 shit. No, get out of there. You're, you're fine. Hey, hey, come back here. Where did you go? Did I get rid of that somehow? All right, well, let's just say x is less than px. Sorry, x of p. Good. Uh, y is less than y of p. OK. Locus uh, g and h. Um, so it's not what we want locus, we want an intersection, uh, intersect, can we do intersect? Intersect, well, apparently we can, um, g and h. All right, hang on. No, I just want to intersect g and h. Okay, what can I intersect? I realize it is Pomodoro time. I will be going here in a second. I'm too excited. Intersect. Um, G. Yeah, something's wrong. All right, Pomodoro back in two and two. And we are back. Let's see if we can... Uh, so, th the intersect is not quite right here, I think. Oh! Hello! Wait. That looks so good for a second. Let's go ahead and make that the... Uh, I think that's it, actually. Um, not quite what I wanted. For a second there, it looked really good. Um, okay. Let's go ahead and show that. Okay, good, good, good. Can I keep going here with my and ands? Y less than Y of P. Oh, here we go. I wonder if I can just edit it in like an, see, okay. It's kind of hard to edit it right here. And then Y greater than zero. Okay, cool. I mean, it's not what I wanted, but I mean that is the uh, that is the correct uh, the correct form here. Uh, so what we really want is the two triangles that are determined here, um, which are going to be. Hoo -yay 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 -yay. Um, the fact that it's got all these G's over it are kind of weird, but it, 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 this is correct. This is what we're looking for in terms of shading. Um, 
So that triangle is defined by yikes. Um, the angle FOP being less, that's, but it's going to be ugly. It's still going to be pretty ugly. Okay, but that's a new feature we discovered here, which is kind of cool. Uh, well, I don't know if it's a new feature, but we, or we discovered it, it obviously was there to begin with, but still, it's pretty cool. Um, so there's no flood fill, but we could get it in theory by using the definitions of, uh, of, uh, you know, of the uh, triangles and the, and the ellipse. Okay. Um, so we now know y of x, which is not, not that terrible, actually. Um, so now we want to kind of try to find areas, even though we can't sort of define these triangles. Um, the area of this triangle here, which we, we need a big giant letter now. Um, we need some, just some text. Okay. This will be called area Q. Why Q? I don't know why Q. Um, and I think I can make this pretty big, actually. Um, there we go. I vaguely remember doing this before. Okay. So area Q, which is going to eventually depend on A and B, just like everything does. Um, so you can derive it from here. There's going to be one half the base, um, which is... Wow, I think the base is always going to... Oh, see, now I need to put Q inside this triangle. That's why it's kind of weird. Um, yeah, I think even when we're over here, the base is just going to be F of A and B. And then the height is going to be Y. Oh, right, and this also depends on X, obviously, uh, because uh, different areas for different values of X. So it's half of F A B uh, times uh, y of x. That is the height? Yep, that's always the height. Nice. I mean, it's always in the upper half plane, but we, we can deal with that. Okay. Nice new formula to have, and we want to give it in its simple form. Um, yeah, and this is where I did have a problem originally. We really want to keep the formulas in two two forms. One are, are you know, how would we get there? And the second is, well, after you're done simplifying it, what does it look like? Um, so that is a that is an issue that we need to deal with, and I have dealt with it. Um, but we need to we need to keep that in mind. So let's go ahead and do this and see what this tells us. The area is equal to again very very nice looking um, nice looking formula there. Um, so that's the area. Now again, this is the area from this is this area Q here. Uh, which is not the area from the focus at all. And we actually probably want the area from, we now need the area from, you know, this area here, basically. Um, so actually, is Q totally useless to us? Might be, actually. Um, Well, actually, if we can find the area, you know, this area here, we can subtract off Q to get this area here. But let's see. Um, so now we're going to be a little bit careful here because this is um, this is very case dependent. I mean, the answer will be the same, but it's case dependent. So here we want to sort of integrate. Um, we have this triangle here, the one that drops if you just drop X straight down. Um, and then we have this area here, which we need to integrate for, which it turns out the integral does actually exist. It's, it's a little bit strange, but it does. Um, so we could just say the integral from of x from, okay, for p of x, it's the integral of y of x. Um, okay, so it's going to be the integral of 
and we need to be careful how we say this, integral of y of x from x goes from, now I don't necessarily want to uh, obviously say x here, but let's just say what the, what's the integral um, if we go from some point to, uh, to a. Um, so I think we can just say what's the integral of y of x with respect to x, just get the generic and it's not integral, it's integrate y of x with respect to x and just see what that is in general and then obviously we can use uh, we can use limits to uh, to limit and this is actually I think a surprisingly nice formula either that or it is completely incomprehensible not as nice as I thought it was but it's still not a um, not an unsolvable problem so you can actually get the area that you need for Kepler's equation you can't just reverse it. The problem is this equation doesn't reverse very nicely. It's also really ugly, so let's go ahead and um, simplify it a little bit. Uh, it doesn't really simplify that much. The b over 2a, by the way, you'll notice, uh, I don't know if there's a negative in there, but b over 2a, you'll notice that's also uh, the directrix of a parabola. That kind of thing is going to show up a lot here. Um, so here it is, if you want to know, you know, um, from a given position, I mean, actually, this is the integral, so you're going to end up subtracting, like, this at given where x is a, which is going to be zero, basically, minus, minus, oh, that's why the minus is there, whatever position you're actually looking from, for. Um, okay. So a lot of ugliness is here. One is I really want to clean up is... In GeoGebra, I want to sort of, you know, say that if you have an ellipse and uh, you're integrating a given area, here's what the value is going to be. Given, you know, given that you have a, b, and the x that you're integrating from, it's going to be this. A uh, little bit ugly to be using x here as my integral. Also, I mean, I could just say, I could just say, iterate y of t with respect to t. Doesn't matter. It's the same thing. Uh, different variable, and then just say that uh, whatever this function is, sub, you know, then use the standard rule for integrals, which is subtract f of a times this, which is actually, I think, just the positive, this is basically the negative of this is what we want. Um, and then we'll have integral from the right of a point in the ellipse. And from that, we should be able to get, well, then we could actually apply this to, oh, hang on. Is it that simple? No, it's not quite that simple. Um, because for a portion of this, we're only integrating up to... Um, we're not integrating all the way... We're not going all the way to, the, to y of x. We're only going to whatever this is, which is... Um, let's see. It's the line that goes from blah to blah. I think. Yeah, I know that wasn't really very accurate. Um, so it's basically we're integrating, we're doing this triangle plus this. This is the area that is actually of interest to us. Um, so that is that is what we're doing there. Um, and see, the problem is if x goes over here, then what we're integrating is um, y of x minus the line up till you get to this point, and then y of x. So it's like that. Okay, um, I think this was not a great stream, so I'm, I'm happy with uh, having screwed you guys over. Uh, I think I will stop the stream now. We have been going for uh, 1 hour 45 minutes, not too bad. All right, thank you for watching, and uh, if you're unlucky, I might be back later today.